Uh, we've been talking about the sedimentary basins and petroleum system. Uh, I think we talked about the uh, type of the basin and the mechanism how they form. So there should be a uh, tectonic movement. Then this tectonic movement can deform and make a bowl shape or some like half bowl shape or elongated shape so that the uh, sediments coming in and you can infill, infill the space, right? So that you have a thick sediment strata and in that sediment strata, the uh, oil and gas can be accumulated. So in, the, in one basin, you can have several accumulation. Also, you can have several traps and seal, right? traps and cap rock. Uh, we've been talking about the uh, basins unrelated to plate boundary. So there was an intra, uh, intra cratonic and the uh, epicratonic. And uh, well, the back R basin and the forward basin trenches are related to convergent plate boundary. So you should have what, subduction zone, then the plate and plate are being together, there are compression force. Right? Um, today we'll talk about the basin related to the divergent plate boundary. So this is uh, basically the ridge. So that the uh, plates are diverging each other, so you have, there is a tension force between these two uh, plate boundaries. Then we'll talk about the transform boundary, the strike slip. So, uh, in the ridge, or the, when you have a tension, the lift basin is bounded by a, a major force system. So, I think we've seen this one. You have, when you have tension force like this, right, then force and graben can be formed, and this in graben, there's a sediment coming in, in, in field, and then you have a basin, right? So lift basin is bounded by a major force system, and symmetric lifts are bounded by two sets of force, and asymmetric, asymmetric lifts are bounded by one set of force. So if you have a just two, two force, then it's a symmetric. If you have just one, then it's a asymmetric. <coughs> lifts occur today along the mid-ocean ridge, which are now interpreted as a zone of sea floor spreading. These lifts are formed in response to the, uh, the tension in the crust as the plate separates. Uh, the resultant troughs are infilled with basaltic lava interbedded with paleogic clays, limestone, and chert because of their, their field and geographic location. The lift basin of mid ocean ridges are now attracted area for hydrocarbon exploration. I think uh, we don't have the, uh, the map here, but mid-ocean ridge is uh, just in the middle of ocean. So it's very far from the continental margin, so it's difficult to uh, connect the pipeline or transport the oil to the uh, shore. So even though you find the oil and gas accumulation in, like, like for example, in the middle of the uh, Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean, it will be very expensive to transport the oil to the coast. So it's not very attractive even though you find it. I think people uh, expect there will be some basin, but uh, um, there is no commercial reservoir, the commercial uh, field being produced. So uh, it lift drift suit of the basin, it needs to be close to the continental margin close to the uh, onshore. Uh, one example is uh, in, in the uh, it's in inland, right here, between the Swiss and France, and it's called the Rhine Lift. It's filled up with the, uh, up to five kilometers of the sediment and have igneous intrusive associated with them. So here you have a two plate boundary and it's going to this direction and because of that, you have a normal fault here, yeah, normal fault. Normal fault developed. Then it forms the basin. Right? Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Okay. Mm. 
Okay. Mm. So uh, here is a uh, line with the showing this schematic, schematic drawing of the section view. You have a mantle with a sphere, right? atmosphere that's uh, flowing, and you have a crust, right? and uh, this is the uh, basin. And another example is the Great Rift Valleys of Africa. And you have, here this is the Red Sea. Right? And Saudi Arabia is this peninsula, and this is the Africa continent. And uh, what we have, major lift is along this, the, uh, the Red Sea. And volcano, volcanic activity. Right? This Central Africa is now known to be crossed by rifts, extending island from Nigeria, Mozambique, and these uh, countries, and sediments include extensive evaporated deposits. So this is another example of the, uh, the lift drift basin. And also in the uh, Red Sea, here is the Egypt and the Saudi Arabia. And you can see uh, these are the uh, oil field in the Red Sea. And when you look at the, uh, this the section view, uh, what do we have? The shale, shale, and sandstone. And this is the basement, right? Granite and limestone. So limestone has been the reservoir, right? and the hydrocarbon has been accumulated here. And it's closed by what? It's closed by a fault. Right? So, and you don't have the fault, two fault, it's only one fault. So it's a, a fault block trap. Mm -hmm. So many oil fields in this Red Sea has been, uh, have been discovered in tertiary carbonate and sandstone. And also the, in Atlantic margin, half graben basin is in here. This is the Atlantic mar uh, Ocean. And uh, you have a mid-ocean ridge. The Atlantic Ocean are flanked by asymmetric half graben basin whose major bounding ports down flow to the ocean. So one side you have, where is this? So this is the basement, and you have a fault, right? And this is bounded by one fault, so it's asymmetric half graben basin. And here also, just one fault, so it's asymmetric basin, and it's quite uh, symmetric, right? And you have a salt dome, this one, and turk. Here is the carbonate limestone. Mm -hmm. So oh, this is the Morocco. It's near the Africa. Okay. This is Scottish. Scottish, Scotland. Mm -hmm. And one other Another uh, famous example of the uh, Gabon Basin, the uh, just west side of the Africa. So, a lot of uh, a very large basin of the sediment. And there is here. These are the black dots are the oil field. And the cross section shows the uh, several salt dome and the fort. Right? So, base, uh, basement and the this is a sandstone field and the salt. Right? So we can expect the, uh, uh, the traps associated with the salt dome and unconformity with this kind of structure. And uh, also it can be trapped by the uh, port. Right? So athletic coastal basin evolved from incratonic uh, rift 
which were initiated on the axis of the coastal divergence and the incipient sea flow spreading. Many of these edges contain considerable reserves of the oil and gas, and trap include tilted fault blocks and uh, sealed by evaporite or the unconformity, and salt dome, and their declines. Many of the uh, productive basin appears to be in the southern hemisphere. In the so, yep. and also the second type of the uh, uh, divergent plate related to uh, the basin, related basin is the uh, failed rift basin. Um, and this is the, uh, when you have two major uh, junction meeting, meeting the three plates, then the major uh, fault axis are maybe one axis, so then you have a secondary ridges developed. So when here, oh, so there are aborted lifts called the failed arms. So this is the secondary arms developed in the, uh, during the uh, uh, divergent plate tectonism. So for example, here, here, If this plate and this plate are moving together, oh no, sorry, this, and this is these two are they are moving to, uh, in this direction. These are two major plates, and then you have this one kind of a um, extra ridge developed at the junction. So, and this for the failed lift basin. These are the uh, um, process of the uh, generation of the basin. Stage one, uh, when the rift was still above the sea level, consists of uh, continental clastics, which are often associated with volcano. And then, here this is the case, and the, the subsiding rift floor ultimately reaches sea level in this condition favors evaporite formation as trough surface oscillates above and below the sea. So first, before it was there above the uh, sea level and as it diverged, the floor goes down and uh, it's just similar to the sea level and so it can be dried and be saturated by the seawater so then the salt can be precipitated so evaporite can form easily, right? evaporite. And then as the lift floor is finally submerged, evaporites are often overlain by organic rich marine mud deposited in the restricted trough. And this becomes the, uh, the well, source rock. Right? And finally, as the rift dilates into an open sea, carbonate shelf and the programming plastic wedges build out over the old lift floor onto the ocean crust. So this is the uh, main mechanism for uh, uh, developing the ridge and the uh, lift basin. And one of the best known failed lift occurs in the uh, North Sea of the Europe. So when you look at the map, just near the Norway, this is the Norway, right? And England here, Scotland here, right? So here is very uh, rich in oil and gas reserves. And central graven, you can see here. So just around and in this uh, basin, there are a lot of uh, major fault and uh, oil and gas reserves. Right? European plate and Greenland plate and North American plates began to separate, and triple R junction developed somewhere uh, to the uh, northeast of the Scotland. And several conditions have made the uh, North Sea with base in a major hydrocarbon province. Uh, in the estimate of the reserve is about 20 billion barrels of oil and 40 trillion cubic feet of gas. So it's very proliferous.
foreign cash reserve. And <clears throat> so the section here, okay, what do you have? We have a section A to B here, right? and another section Y to Z here. And A, B section is to the upper figure. And so basement, and you can see the major growth fault. And the sediment is filled here. Right? And what do we have? These are the shale. Right? And clay. <coughs> um, the lower figure is I think it's more of the uh, typical lift basin. We have a boat. And this is evaporite. So this is salt. Evaporite. And the sandstone and limestone. On the turf, yep. The clay here. So it's the reservoir is provided by the polycyclic sand. So here the, the sand formation gives you the reservoir. And traps are many and varied. Geothermal gradient were once normally high, so you mentioned the hydrocarbon generation and migration. So therefore each geology was very it favors the hydrocarbon generation. And the last type of the basin is the strax lip basin. Uh, we talk about the cratonic basin and the subductive ba basin and lift drip sequence. And these were related to convergent boundary. And uh, when, it, when it was the convergent boundary like this, the back arc and the four arc basin. Right? And the divergent boundary lift drip suit of by basin. And the last one is the uh, Transcurrent boundary, strikes the basin. So this is, I can show you the picture later. Uh, okay, so another summary of the, uh, the type of the basin. Uh, okay, so where plates move past one another, however, the movement is seldom wholly parallel, and these reef basins are generally very deep, subside rapidly, and the rates of high heat flow. So as you can see, the, you have a major fault, and uh, there's a shearing movement like this. Then it's called a strax lift basin. One example is the deep sea lift here, a uh, dead sea lift here. And it's about 15 kilometer wide and uh, 150 kilometer long. Petroleum chip. Yep. Another one, famous one is in California. Uh, in California, there are a lot of earthquakes. Yeah, there was a big earthquake in San Francisco and the Los Angeles. Right? And that, those were because of the fault movement. And okay, let's see, Sacramento Bay. Let's look at the fault first. San Andreas Fault is the one. Yeah, this one, right? San Andreas Fault. And La Cimiento, Santa Yez, Santa Monica. So one major fault are here, fault are here, and another fault are here, right? And you have Sacramento Basin here, and San Joaquin Basin, and Ventura. So there are several basins along this track strip basin, uh, track strip, yeah? the fourth, major fourth. And track strip basins associated with transparent four systems of California are very proliferous. And these lifts are mainly of late tertiary age. Thick sequences are more than 10 kilometers. So track strip is the uh, deepest, it provides the deepest uh, basin, typically. Uh, the uh, thinnest one is the intracratonic, right? and estimate the ultimate recoverable reserve for California Basin is uh, more than 15 billion uh, barrel oil and gas. Uh, 
Okay. Then, how these sedimentary basins are related to petroleum system? Uh, petroleum system are related to the uh, volumes of petroleum generated from the source rock. So let's keep our concept and then uh, correlate with the petroleum system. And it may be useful to consider the distribution of the petroleum in the various types of basin and then to consider the vertical distribution of the petroleum within the basin. Um, so uh, this is give you an idea about the traps. You have a migration, and then accumulation, and if this, there's a more petroleum coming in, and this is already filled up to the spill point. So another one, the, the sequential flow will just pass through to the upper surface. Right? And if this is just the uh, mm, uh, surface, or surface, then the, you have an oil seep. So you can just find the um, oil and gas seeping through the, uh, the land or soil surface. Uh, this figure shows the uh, sedimentary basins and petroleum producing area over the world. And let's look at the, uh, this is a very nice picture. So green means that onshore basin and the blue is the uh, uh, offshore basin, and of course in the uh, Red Sea region here, Saudi Arabia. Oh. Here's the uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, the Red Sea, and oh, where is this? Where go, did you? Kazakhstan, no? this is around near Kazakhstan or Afghanistan, and here Indonesia, right? and this is the Gabon Basin. There we just saw just before. Um, I think uh, this is the uh, in Canada, just east side of the, uh, the Rocky Mountain. Right? It's in the, there's a basin truncated by the Rocky Mountain. So, and in the North Sea, right? at the Triple R Junction, Pretty much there also, right? Okay. And when we look at the distribution of hydrocarbons in different types of basin, um, the type four is the major accumulation. And Arabian Gulf has the 38% of the world's reserve. And these figures do not indicate the distribution of the actual reserve, but only of the known reserve. Um, what we have, epicratonic basin is much more proliferous than the intracratonic, right? It has, and well, I think the world basin area, this is the most, huh? but the proven reserves are about the second largest. Uh, third largest is the lift here, and coastal lift here, and four are Back arc is about one, two, three, fourths, right? And glasses, tertiary delta. And the continental borderland downward is the most bounding, or the most occurring the reserve. Uh, percentage of the reserve found in tertiary deltas and coastal basins will increase as the oil exploration extends into deeper and deeper water. So this is, I think, uh, hmm, 1980s, so it was uh, 30 years ago, but it's been changing. 
and oil and gas tends to occur in sediment basin in regular pattern. So this is quite interesting and important point of the petroleum geology. Oil density decreases and uh, with depth. So you can see, and also oil gravity, API, generally increases with the depth. So here, as you go deeper, so this figure shows that with depth, API increases. So that means what? You have lighter oil as you go deeper, right? Right, light, and this is heavy. So heavy oil tends to be uh, shallow, and with increasing depth, pass down into light oil condensate, and finally the gas, until the point at which the hydrocarbons and phosphorus are absent. So many local conditions may disturb this pattern, but there's uh, some exception. But the, generally, you can find this kind of a trend. Um, so that oil tends to become lighter laterally toward the basin center. So this is the lateral, lateral distribution. Before, it was the uh, vertical distribution. Right? So laterally, it's lighter towards the basin center. Uh, typically, heavier occurs around the basin margin and condensate and the gas in the center. And then people asked why this is, why we see this kind of pattern. So Gusso uh, suggested one hypothesis, and uh, uh, he think of this kind of a simple anticline structure. Right? So here is the basin center and basin margin, right? So as you tour, as you go towards the margin, it, the sedimentary basin will be shallower and it becomes uh, deeper. So the petroleum is being produced somewhere here and then it migrates, right? Let's say that this trap here, then another oil is coming in, then even though the, this, is, this was the oil, if this is the gas coming in, and gas will fill up, right? And so this will push down the oil right, because of the density difference, so that the oil will flow over to the spill point, and it will migrate to the shallow surface, right? So in the end, because of the uh, density difference, you have a uh, gas filled up in the deeper anticline or deeper trap. And as you go up and up, you have a uh, oil with the higher density trap. Right. So that's why you have a uh, gas here, E and F traps, and the D. You have a gas cap and the oil beneath it, and C and D you have a oil. So this is the theory suggested by this Gusso, uh, and this was a typical pattern also found in, in the basin. So as you go to the basin center, you have a more light oil, and deeper you have a more light oil, or shallow, and the towards the margin you have a heavy oil. So. Um, Mm. Yeah, this explanation is just if you have the same I just told just before. Uh. So he, um, okay. Let me see. So then, as a geologist, if you drill here and you found it that the oil was up to the spill point, the full the, the trap was full of the full of the oil, and then you can expect that the one next to it here, the D, will be also containing the oil and gas. Right? And towards the margin, you may find the oil or it could be barren. Right? So if your first well was here, and the oil, oil was not uh, full, fully 
target to the spill point, then you can kind of guess that the A trap will be better, and the B or the C trap will be more uh, more accumulation, hydrocarbon accumulation you can find. Huh? So this kind of a concept can be used to uh, determine the where to drill, depending on you find the traps uh, around the, uh, the, the surrounding area or the neighboring area in one basin. Uh, so this was established based on the uh, Boni Glen, Wizard Lake Devonian Leaf Complex of the Alberta. And another one is an excellent example is in Niagara Leaf. And donation of the oil, light oil, and heavy oil from basin center to margin may be due to a combination of thermal maturation and degradation of the material water. So the one another uh, mm, possibility is, I think we've known that the gas is from the kerosene when it transforms to the oil and gas. Liquid oil requires the uh, mm, less temperature, right? If you have a high, very high temperature, it favors to form the gas. But uh, if you have a mid-range temperature, it favors to form the oil, right? So that's why it may be related to the, the you find the, the fact that you find the gas in the deeper region could be uh, because of the thermal maturation. And also the as they migrate to the uh, upper surface, you have a more uh, water circulation, right? So then light oil can be degraded better, the easily, more easily than the heavy oil. So that in the surface, you have a oh, light component has been decomposed by the bacteria or the water circulation. And then you have only heavy oil left over. So, um, Level of thermal maturation of the source bed is also the one cause of the distribution of the hydrocarbon you find in the basin. The gas being generated at the higher temperature, therefore the greater depth than the oil. And the regional distribution of the permeable carrier formation affect that this turn the impedance of the petroleum system. Um, So it is particularly useful when trying to understand the local variations in the distribution of the different gravities of the petroleum so in the one basin. Uh, I think uh, this is the, the strategy. If the trap C was the first drill, trap C here, and then it was full to spill point, then both trap B and D will be prospective. It, was, it may be anticipated that trap D will be full to the spill point, but thickness of the oil column in B, in trap B is unsure, is unknown. And consider the trap B had been drilled first, and had been found not to be full to spill point, it would be sound policy to drill trap C, but trap A should be farmed out, so it should be ruled out at the earliest opportunity since it's unlikely to have received any, any oil. Okay, good, so that was the uh, end of the uh, chapter 8.